Two numbers are said to be directly proportional when an increase in one leads to a proportional increase in the other. What I mean by that is, let's say we have um, you know, two numbers. Uh, we'll go two and four. If I was to double this one, it becomes a four. Doubling that one becomes an eight. So if, if, um, you know, if I'm keeping these, if I do kind of the same doubling to both of these, they remain proportional. Um, and one way that this proportionality, this direct proportionality, is sometimes expressed is through a little alpha symbol here, A, alpha, B. Uh, this means A is proportional to B. It's not very useful writing it like that, but sometimes it is written like that. Usually a more useful way of writing it is saying A is equal to some constant times B. Um, because of the origins of mathematics, when we're talking about a constant value, we often use the letter K. Um, you know, go, that goes back to German being a prominent language. Um, but in any case, A equals some constant times B. Um, if you solve that, if you say, okay, we could rewrite this, we could say divide both sides by B, or you know, what number times K equals is A, um, you can see in either of those we would get A over B is equal to K. I think it's easier to say divide both sides by B. Um, those B's cancel out, because that's usually how we solve equations. All right, so in any case, um, this would allow us to find out the value of K. This is our our constant, or you know, the, con the constant of proportionality is sometimes what it's called. All right, so in this first example, we have um, it says electrical resistance of a wire is directly proportional to its length. The longer the wire, the greater the resistance. If you double the length of the wire, it'll double the resistance. If you triple the length, it'll triple the resistance. All right, um, if one, if we have one foot of nichrome heater element, and it has a resistance of 1.65 ohms what length of wire would be needed to provide a resistance of 18 or 19.8 ohms. So you're designing a, you're creating a, a heater and you want it to have a specific resistance because you want it to, um, you want it to be able to put off a certain amount of heat and not draw too much current. Um, I'm not going to get into how you would calculate what you need for the, the resistance here, but we do know that this, uh, these numbers would be proportional. So we know that if we had one foot of uh, this heater, this um, this element wire, it would be 1.65 ohms. And we know that this is going to be some length, on some unknown length, I'll call it x for the moment, divided by 19.8 ohms. And you can see when I'm setting up these ratios, the only real important thing is that I keep the like, you know, keep them set up in the same way. Um, this ratio, this first ratio, is both the one foot example. So one foot of it, of wire has 1.65 ohms of resistance. Once I've set this up, my lengths need to be on the top part of the fractions, and my resistance has to be on the bottom part of the fraction. That's why I said x over 19.8. But once I've set that up and said they're equal, I can solve this by saying 1.65x equals 1 times 19.8 and then I can just say that x must be 1 times 19.8 over 1.65. Of course 1 times 19.8 is just 19.8 so we get 19.8 divided by 1.65 which gives us 12. So we would need 12 feet of wire. I got my units because this original length was in feet as well. Another example, if we have one gallon of paint that covers 825 square feet, how much paint is needed to cover 20, uh, 2,640 square feet? Um, oftentimes paint is, you know, they, they sell it and they say how many square feet of coverage it gets. And you knew that you had a job that require, that's going to require this much paint. So let's see, one gallon of paint requires 825 square feet, or doesn't require 825 square feet, it covers that, whatever. We don't know the number of gallons that are needed, so I'll just put an X there, but we do know that we want to cover 2640 square feet. All right, well, X is going to be 825, or it's going to be the product of these, so 2640 times 1 divided by 825. I'm 
skipping through a couple of steps there, but hopefully you can kind of see where I get, get this from since we've done a number of these by now. And we get, we should need 3.2 gallons. Now, if you're going to the store, um, it would not make sense to round the nearest gallon in this case, because that would mean you'd only be buying three gallons of paint and you would actually be short. Um, there's many instances in the real world where rounding just doesn't make sense to go round to the nearest number. There are certain instances where you'll want to round up, like in this one, I would buy four gallons of paint, assuming it was sold a gallon at a time. It's not bad to have a little extra paint anyway. Um, but there are also some instances where you'd want to round down. So you just have to be aware of your context to know which way to round. Um, I'm just going to leave this as 3.2 gallons since there's no additional instructions of rounding.